The Lazarus pits are naturally forming pools of water that heal people and can even resurrect the dead. They're basically just magic pools of magical healing liquid, which makes them literally the best natural resource on Earth. So naturally, they're kept hidden from the public and only used by the rich and powerful Rachel Ghoul, who has used them to live for hundreds of years and doesn't share these waters with anyone. But of course, others have used them many times over the years, as you can't keep something like that a secret. Now, I have previously done a video on every time that Batman has used a Lazarus Pit, and I'm now going to go over every time the Bat family has used one. Alfred. Alfred has used the pools on a couple of occasions. One is in the TV show Gotham. In the episode in question, Bruce Wayne is being mind controlled and is forced to stab Alfred. Watching Alfred bleed to death snaps Bruce out of the mind control and he gets some of the Lazarus Pit water and pours it on the wound, healing it and saving Alfred's life. Though this isn't a full dip or a full resurrection but he is fully resurrected in the comic book series Injustice. Now this comic book is based in the Injustice universe of the Injustice video game. And as I have said before, if you haven't read it, then you should, because it has some amazing storytelling in it. Now Alfred dies in this universe and is resurrected by Rachel Ghoul. Now you may think Rach did this for Batman in a nice kind gesture, but you'd be wrong. He actually brought Alfred back to life so that he could use him as a hostage over Batman. So if Batman interferes with Rachel Ghoul's plans, he kills Alfred. And it's also because both Jason Todd and Damian Wayne are working for Rache in this universe and he wants to keep them happy. Though it mainly seems to be about controlling Batman. Though of course it doesn't stop him from attacking to come and get Alfred back. Now the pit does resurrect Alfred, but only in body. His mind just isn't there. And he's essentially brain dead, a vegetable sitting in a chair. At least he is at first. But the sight of Damian Wayne and Batman fighting one another snaps him back as he needs to get up and stop them. He always was the one that held the Bat family together after all. But still, he's not entirely there. He has gaps in his memory and struggles with his movements and performing simple tasks. So even when he returns to Wayne Manor, he eventually leaves Bruce Wayne as he considers himself not to be fit enough to be his butler anymore, at least for the moment. So he goes in his own way and hopefully he fully recovers further down the road though that's all we've seen of him so far in this universe. And of course, Damien did kind of use a Lazarus Pit in this universe as well, as he was the one who carried Alfred's corpse into the Lazarus Pit. So technically, he was exposed to the pit's chemicals. Though whether or not I actually did anything to him, we don't really know yet. Though Damien has used a Lazarus Pit in the Batman Beyond comic. In this future of the DC universe, Damien has become the head of the League of Shadows. But there is a coup and he is overthrown and attacked by the League. He's injured extremely badly, and he is saved by the new Batman, Terry McGuinness. And he takes him to Batman's new base, where the old Bruce Wayne has developed a healing pod, which is technically not a Lazarus Pit, but it does contain key chemical ingredients from the Lazarus Pit. So basically, it's just a more advanced and safer version of a Lazarus Pit. And Damien isn't dead, just severely wounded, and so the pod saves his life and returns him to full strength. And it also sends him into a murderous rage. The pod is an improved version of a Lazarus Pit, but it does still have the side effect of temporary insanity. Though thankfully it wears off before Damien can properly attack Batman. And one downside of this pod is that it doesn't fully heal Damien. He's still quite beaten up and damaged. The main injuries are gone, yes, but it hasn't healed him fully like a normal Lazarus Pit would. It's not explained why exactly it does this when it's supposed to be an improved version, but I suppose it's to stop the pit from attacking your mind too severely. You get the temporary insanity, but it probably doesn't do much else. At least I would think so. A Aphanasia. In the Injustice universe, Batman and Talia have a daughter named Aphanasia. Now, it's not entirely clear if she is Damian Wayne's twin sister or if she was born at a different time, but it came across to me when I read the comic that she was Damian's twin. But sadly, whereas Damian was born fine, Aphanasia was born dead. And so Talia gave the body to Rachel Ghoul, who put the baby in the Lazarus pit and resurrected her. Though it's heavily implied that her mind came out wrong because of this. She is much more aggressive, violent and psychopathic than even Damian Wayne, which is saying something. Though to be honest, this really could just be a result of her being raised in the League of Assassins, as that is going to mess you up. Or it could just be a combination of the pit and the assassins. Now personally, I loved the idea of her character and I found her very entertaining. And I'd actually like to see her brought into canon in the main DC universe. But getting back to the Injustice universe, she is eventually kicked out of the League of Shadows by Rachel Ghoul and goes to Batman's side. 
and Batman promptly puts her in prison for murder and other crimes. Though I'm sure she'll eventually be let loose or just escape on her own. She is in the superhero league after all, and they never actually serve a full term of a prison sentence. Kate Kane. After Batman dies during the events of Final Crisis, Dick Grayson tries to resurrect him with a Lazarus pit. Unfortunately, as it turns out, it's not actually Batman, but a clone of Bruce Wayne who is switched by Darkseid at the moment of Batman's death. It's a bit complicated to get into, but basically they resurrect a clone of Batman that goes absolutely nuts and just attacks them. And in the ensuing chaos of the attack, Batwoman is severely injured in a rock side, so much so that she is going to die before they can get to the surface. So she took a load of morphine from Dick Grayson and overdosed, killing herself. This was so she could be resurrected by the primeval Lazarus pit. Now you're probably thinking, why couldn't she just go in with her injuries and have them healed? Well, some of the Lazarus pits have weird rules to them, and for this one to work, she apparently needed to be dead. So she kills herself, which to be fair, does actually take some serious guts, even if you know you're coming back to life. And afterwards, Dick Grayson carries her corpse into the pit and brings her back to life with no side effects, not even temporary madness. And of course, she is completely healed. And the real question about all of this scene is, why does Dick Grayson carry enough morphine to overdose a person? I mean, I know they keep a lot of things in those utility belts of theirs, but a lot of morphine doesn't really seem like it'd be high on the list. I suppose it's for a painkiller in case someone gets hurt, but still, it's a little bit odd. And since Dick Grayson carried her into the pit, technically, he used the Lazarus pit as well, or was at least exposed to the chemicals. But again, since you needed to be dead for this pit to really take effect on you, this doesn't really count. But Dick Grayson does use a Lazarus pit in the film Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. Now, in this film, the Justice League attack Darkseid on the planet Apocalypse, and they do this as a preemptive strike in order to protect Earth. But it all goes horribly wrong, and the heroes are either killed, captured, or a few of them do manage to get away. But in any case, Darkseid then goes on to conquer the Earth, which means this preemptive strike did absolutely nothing except get a lot of heroes killed. And unfortunately, Nightwing is one of these heroes who has died. Now, after all this fight has happened, Damian Wayne, who is one of the ones who survives, decides to take his birthright and become the new head of the League of Assassins. And one of the first things he does is try to resurrect his brother, Dick Grayson, in one of the Lazarus pits. But unfortunately, Dick Grayson was too damaged to be returned fully. As I said, some of these Lazarus pits have different rules. And in the New 52 universe, they mainly just keep you young and heal you. They're not very good at resurrecting a person if they're really damaged. So Dick Grayson's body comes back pretty much restored, but his mind is not and he is essentially just a feral animal who's locked in a cage, much like a crazy person in Arkham Asylum. Now, this isn't the best resurrection on this list. In fact, it's actually quite sad. And I'm sure you're seeing the theme. The pits can heal you, but they do sometimes damage the mind, and you never really know what you're going to get. Now, usually the insanity is only temporary, but sometimes, like this, it's pretty much permanent. It's why a lot of heroes don't like to resurrect people using the Lazarus pits, because it can all go horribly wrong. Cassandra Kane. Now, Cassandra is probably best known as the hero Orphan, but she did actually have a stint as Batgirl in the comics, and that is when she used a Lazarus pit. Now, Cassandra has had quite a tragic life that is, quite frankly, just too long to get into. But the short version is, she was bred by the League of Assassins and trained to be the perfect bodyguard for Rachel Ghoul. So, she is one hell of a hand-to-hand -hand fighter, one of the best in the world. Of course, she eventually gets away from the League and joins the Bat family and becomes Batgirl, where she is sadly killed by Mad Dog, who is her kind of brother, though they don't really know each other that well. And her mother, Lady Sheba, decides to resurrect her by putting her in a Lazarus pit, which in this comic book series are more like pits of fire. And she is resurrected and comes out more or less fine. She does have the temporary insanity and tries to attack Lady Sheba, but Sheba's quite a skilled assassin and is able to deal with her. But once the insanity is worn off, her mother insists they fight to the death. Her mother's actually quite insane, as you've probably guessed. Cassandra agrees, and then she breaks her mother's neck and impales her on a hook, killing her. This girl has one of the more complex and messed up families in the Bat family, which is really saying something. She would put Shiva in the pit as well, but Shiva doesn't want to be put in, though we later find out she has been resurrected by a Lazarus pit, presumably falling off the hook and into the pit. Though since it's off panel, we don't actually know for sure. The Signal In the Dark Knight Death's Metal comic event, there is an alternate Batman who is actually the Signal. 
In his universe, Batman failed his sidekick and the signal died. So Batman decided to resurrect him in a Lazarus pit. Sadly, Rachel Ghoul didn't like this and tried to stop him. So the signal's body was in the pit and Rachel Ghoul and Batman fought to the death next to it. Then, once they had both killed each other, they fell into the pit and all three of them became merged together into one being, becoming Quietus, one of the evil Batman who attacks the main DC universe. Although from the way he talks, it seems like most of his personality comes from the signal. And even though this isn't the main continuity version of the signal, it's just some alternate version, I'm still counting it as the time that Duke has used a Lazarus pit. Tim Drake Now, Tim Drake has never actually used a Lazarus pit, but he was strongly tempted to use one to resurrect Superboy, Spoiler, and his father, all of whom were of course close to him and died. Though he did decide against it, as like I said, the pits are unpredictable and he didn't want them to come back as monsters. And of course, it later turns out that Spoiler faked her death and Superboy gets resurrected anyway, so the pit wasn't really needed for them, although unfortunately his father does stay dead. After all, Robin's parents never stay alive for long, but they always stay dead. With the exception of Damian Wayne's father, of course, who's been resurrected a few times. And speaking of Batman, now as I have said, I have done a video in the past on all the times that Batman has used the Lazarus Pit. However, that was some time ago and new films have since been released, such as the anniversary edition of Batman Under the Red Hood. Now this anniversary edition is a multi-path film, which means you get to choose how the story goes. And there are a set of choices that sees Batman die and then resurrected in the Lazarus Pit by Talia. Though his mind is extremely damaged and he's basically just a puppet that does whatever Talia al Ghul tells him to. He even murders Jason Todd on her orders, which is something that Batman would never do. So that goes to show how little of his mind is actually in there. Again, this is one of those times when they really shouldn't have resurrected him. And for the rest of the times the Batman has used the Lazarus Pit, check out the links in this video's description. Jason Todd. Now this is without a doubt the most famous member of the Bat family to go in a Lazarus Pit, which is why I've left it till last because we all already know about it. Now Jason was killed by the Joker, and since Rachel Ghoul felt responsible for this, as he was the one who hired the Joker to distract Batman while he carried out his own evil plans, Rach then decides to correct this by resurrecting Jason Todd. Though when Jason comes back, he is a little bit mental and attacked everyone in sight. Now, as I have said before, it isn't uncommon after a resurrection for temporary madness, but it appears like his mind becomes quite badly damaged, which is why he ends up becoming the supervillain Red Hood. Now, the movie is a lot like the comic in some ways, but there is a key difference in how Jason Todd is resurrected. In the comic book, Superboy punches the walls of reality, which causes ripples in the universe and changes things, such as resurrecting Jason Todd. The idea is a bit out there and doesn't really make sense. After all, how do you punch the universe hard enough to do this? But you just have to go with it. It is comics after all, though it's easy to see why they changed it for the film. But even though Jason Todd is resurrected, his mind isn't there at least not fully. So after Talia al Ghul finds him, she is able to eventually convince her father to let him use a Lazarus pit, and the pit's healing powers fix his mind, and he comes back more or less as the same person. I know it's a little odd that his mind gets fixed by a Lazarus pit when a lot of the time the Lazarus pit actually damages people's minds, but like I said, these pits are difficult and temperamental, and you never really know what you're going to get when you use one. And that is every time that the Bat family has used a Lazarus pit. Now, personally, I think the best one is the Aphanasia one, as I love the addition of her character to the Batman mythos, and I'd love to see Batman with a daughter in the main DC continuity, as I think it'd be a great character to add, and a great set of stories could come from that. And of course, I do love the film Batman Under the Red Hood, so I do have to say that this resurrection is absolutely perfect, and definitely the best on this list in terms of animation, because it's just a fantastic film. But which of these is your favourite? And are there any other times you know of where a Bat family member has used a Lazarus pit? Feel free to let us know in the comments, as I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, and I'd also love to know if I've missed one of the times they've used a pit, as I like these videos to be as accurate and comprehensive as possible. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those of you who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.